Warrington Beach Road, Washington. This is all from the fires, California, Oregon, and Washington. The Northwest Adventure presents Catching Crabs. Dungeness Crabs, that is. If you've never made it down to Toklin, Washington, you should definitely check it out. It's a small town of about 151 folks with lots of crabbing opportunities. And for some reason, if you don't happen to land any crab, swing by Nelson Crab Incorporated and they've got exactly what you're looking for. Beats by AC the PD. Now that I've arrived to the dock, let me introduce myself. I go by the name of the Northwest Adventurer. And what we're going to talk about and show you in this episode is how to use a crab ring. How to throw it in the water, how to let it soak, and how to retrieve the crabs, and how to identify the males from the females. If you're new to my channel, please hit the like button. And if you like what you see, then subscribe to the Northwest Adventure. All right, so the bait we're using today is chicken. I went to Swanson's in Westport, picked these big breasts up, boneless. I'm using a bait bag to hold on to the frozen chicken. Mm. Right. Chicken. Oil. So now the crab ring is pretty much ready to go. I've got the bait in the bag, and now I'm gonna do kind of an underhand toss into the waters of the Willapa Bay. Now that the crab ring has hit the bottom, I'm gonna let it soak in the water for about the next 15 to 20 minutes. So basically what I'm trying to do is get the crabs sniffing out the bait and they're gonna start cruising my way. And once they get to the ring and after about that time elapses, I'm gonna give it a nice tug and pull that baby up. In the state of Washington, I can legally fish with either two crab pots or two crab rings. I prefer the crab rings because they're easier for me to transport around. Which do you prefer, crab pots or crab rings? Let's discuss in the comments. Last week's chicken. Let's go with the fresh. Fresh is the word, you heard. Make sure you load up the crab bag with about as much chicken as you can. Just stuff it in there until you can barely close the little tie down. Because as long as it soaks in the water, and the crabs are nibbling at it, it's gonna go. Now that crab ring number two is locked and loaded, it's time to give it that underhand toss into the bay. Well, crab pot number one's been in the bay for about, yeah, 20 minutes. So it's time to bring her on up and see if anything's taken the bait. Hopefully we have some keepers. Stay tuned. All right, so even though I caught a shitload of crabs, I can't keep all of them because there's a minimum of six inches for the male Dungeons crab. So right now I'm holding a female and a male. So let me show you how you can tell. So if you look at the underneath sides of them, see right there? That is the female, see how white it is? And there's the males right there. And look at how narrow it is. So yeah, definitely. Oh, got crizabs all over the place. So yeah, this is fun. It's gonna be a good night.
Did you count how many crabs I just threw back in the bay? If you did, give me the number in the comments and let's see if you got it right. How do you throw your crab rings into the water? Do you do the underhand toss? Or do you throw it like a frisbee? Round two. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe. Not so much digging the eel grass, but it is what it is. Measure one. The crabs rule. Let's see what we got. Six. Let's keep her. Yeah. Into the bucket he goes. I don't like to brag nor even boast, but who catches crabs from coast to coast? So here's that frisbee toss I was talking about. This way it gets out there pretty far. Sometimes, all depends on how late in the night it is and how many times I've had to throw that thing out there. Ah, uh, yeah, now we're talking. Not so much eelgrass and kelp this time, just crabs. Okay. This guy looks like a total keeper. He's missing his two claws. I'm going to put him in the bucket and find my measuring device <laughs> and measure it. But I'm pretty darn sure it's over six. It's bigger than the other one. Yep, he's good. He's six. If you don't think bringing in these crab rings is a workout, you gotta come out and do one of these nights with me. I definitely stay in shape. And even though I'm not catching a lot of keeper crabs, I'm catching a lot of crabs and so basically that's the point to come on out throw your rings in the water pull up some product sort through them and have a good time all right chicken so why do i use frozen chicken for bait well, the simple fact is there's a lot of seals, sea lions, and maybe sea otters out here. And those guys love eating fish. They're not too privy on chicken, nor do they like turkey. So those are my baits of choice when I come out to crab fish. Rarely do I ever use fish to catch crab. Now, does that mean I'll turn down some salmon or tuna carcasses? No, not at all. I'd be more than glad to use them. But I'll tell you this, when you're using a crab ring, they're not gonna last long. That's why I stick with chicken or turkey. So the last pull I had at the dock here, nothing was in the crab ring. So I decided to pack it up cruise down the dock a little bit, try it there for 20 minutes. Well, after 20 minutes, I pulled it up and there was nada, nothing, not even one little red rock crab. Now at this point of the evening, I'm kind of thinking that I may be the only person who's still up. All right, so this is the final pull for the night of the crab ring. After that, I'm Audi 5000. I have 146 miles north to drive to get home. So now that you all know this is the last pull of the night, do you really think I'm going to get any more keepers?
Come on now, stick around, watch the rest of the video. And let me show you how this old salty dog gets things done. All right, cool. Six. Oh yeah, that's all I needed was a six. So now that I've got my catch, let's cruise back to Studio Narvaez. I'm going to show you how I prepare these, cook them up, and eat them up. Yum! I'm going to steam these dogs. So, I've never added beer to my crabs, but watching a few YouTube videos, peeps in Virginia and Maryland use it for the blue crabs. So I'm going to try it with a can of Heineken and see how it turns out. So once I get this little platform installed, it's going to be about a quarter inch above the water. Then I'm going to turn the stove on to like medium high. So pay close attention to how I handle these crabs. If you haven't handled crabs before, pay attention because they will chop your fingers up real nicely. The nail. Teeny claws. Got a hard shell though. Yeah. Okay. Another male. So when I pull these out of the pot, there's going to be an orange reddish color. They're going to look quite beautiful. All right, I'm going to set it for about 27 minutes. After the first 15 minutes or so of steaming, I like to open up the top and rearrange the crabs because I've got three in there steaming, but I like to get them kind of upside down, sideways, on their bottom side, you name it, I'll flip them. Remember that the steam will burn you. So once again, pay attention and you'll want to wear gloves. After these crabs have been steaming, they're hotter than a New York bagel, so wear gloves or use tongs. How do you prepare your crab? Do you boil it? Do you steam it? Do you fry it? Do you bake it? Do you grill it? Do you barbecue it? Do you smoke it? The possibilities are endless, yo. Mmm, delicious. sure there will be any left for crab cakes. Mm -mm -mm. You don't have to add any seasoning, any sauce to this stuff. It's good to go. The following morning, my sister stopped by to pick up a little bit of crab for my mom. A few hours later, my mom sent me this text and a picture of her lunch. So by the look of the picture, I totally believe she loved that Dungeness Crab. <laughs>